Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. If you guys haven't noticed already, this week we're not at all going to be covering my tank. We're actually going to be featuring an Instagrammer's tank who has become a very, very popular on Instagram. Now this gentleman I, I am talking about guys is Kim or Kimmy's Reef, also known as Kim Hansen. This guy, I actually came across his tank probably about, I would say, a few months back, about four or five, six months ago. And looking at his Instagram, I think you can very quickly see how he became so popular. I mean, this guy really takes photography above and beyond and captures us in ways that we probably never even imagined. You know, a lot of tanks, you know, capture your attention by the colors, the fish, you know, all these crazy corals, these scapes, everything. And not trying to put his tank down, although it's very beautiful, very nice, very simplistic. I think the way he's able to capture the shots of his fish, his corals, his tank just had so much depth, so much dimension, and really take you and capture you in a whole different way. So Kim's story is very interesting. Obviously, I'm going to give you guys a full rundown of his full equipment. But the story he shared with me was really, really cool. And I think a lot of people are going to be able to relate uh, to his story. So what Kim let me know, I kind of let him know, dude, how did this tank come to be? I was wondering if this was his first setup. But no, he had been doing reefing for quite some time. And he actually had a bigger setup. He was traveling a lot, you know, very occupied. I like to just call it life. And the tank would just get neglected. He'd come back home. Um, and you know, you'd have a really, really big mess. So pretty much he was debating on quitting. He finally made up his mind and decided to quit the hobby altogether. But when he looked at his two clowns, he couldn't fathom the thought of just getting rid of them. He'd had them for so long and he really just couldn't grasp that whole idea of letting the whole tank go, much less letting the poor clownfish go that he had become very attached to so in that he had an idea and he said you know what since I'm very busy I travel a lot and I do want these clowns why don't I just get a smaller tank to house these clowns and even if I am gone and I come back and the tanks a mess it's something that can be sorted out you know in a day and this is something I think is a great point and believe it or not I was thinking of making a video on this specific topic in the future and that is a lot of people think that bigger tanks are a lot easier. Well, they're kind of a double-edged sword, believe it or not. A bigger tank is easier when it is on track. But once a bigger tank gets off track, whether it's algae, whether it's pests, whether it's uh, a disease, whatever it is, when it goes on off track, it goes off track. Think of it as a train. A train in motion can remain in motion very easily, right? It's very effortless. But try to steer that train or that cruise ship or whatever it is 180 degrees and you're going to have some trouble. So it's very funny that Kim was talking about this and he's dead on. You know, a lot of people say, oh, smaller tanks are difficult. They're very hard to maintain. Well, yes and no. One thing I love about smaller tanks is if something is going south, doing a 50% water change is very simple. I mean, even doing a 50% water change two, three, four times a week to get it back on track is something that's very, very simple. Try doing that with a 100, 200, 300 gallon tank. Those water changes are going to get old very, very quick. So it's very interesting how Kim kind of went on this journey and how this whole tank came to be. It really started from him being on the verge of quitting. I think a lot of us have been there. You know, life gets in the way. And I think this is really where tank automation will sometimes help you. But nonetheless, these tanks certainly need care from us. Uh, they need a little bit more than just feeding the fish, feeding the corals. They take a little bit more of love. And I think Kim did a great job in choosing a smaller setup because just like he mentioned, if you are out of town and you get back in town and it is a mess, it's an algae issue or whatever, it's something that can be fixed very, very quickly. So the tank is one year old. It is a custom build tank, so it's nothing you can get off the shelf. It's a 23 by 15 by 9 inches. 
typically considered a lagoon style system. It does have an eShops Eclipse overflow. Now on the bottom, what you're seeing here is a 13 gallon sump. He runs a UV sterilizer, 36 watts. It actually runs bi-weekly, so one week off, one week off. For the skimmer, he is running a very oversized Arca Core 80 skimmer. The return to pump he is using is a CJ. Now he did mention to me that he had a fuge on the bottom of the sump, but it was actually too effective and he was running into uh, dynos. So I know a lot of you guys are aware as good as refugiums are, there is such a thing as being too effective. And you can see why, you know, he doesn't have a very big bio load. He just has two clownfish, a few selection of corals. So I can certainly see how that would become an issue. Now for the wave maker, he is using the MP10 non-quiet drive, which he mentioned to me, it's loud as you know what. <laughs> for one interesting thing that you will notice for the uh, anemone, he's actually using a freshwater glass sphere. Uh, again, this is very common in, in freshwater tanks, and he's using this to actually house the NEM. I think as much as we all love NEMs, they can become a hassle, especially on a, a tank like his. You can see it's just two islands. If that NEM got a foothold on any one of those two islands, it would kill all the coral on either one of those islands. So it's a very cool way to keep your NEM in one place. And, you know, this is something that I think if I ever did, I'd probably do it like this because, again, as much as I love NEMs, they can be pretty problematic. Once they set a foothold in a rock, it's nearly impossible to get them out. Now for the light on top, he is running a Gen 2 non-pro with a diffuser. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking how in the heck or what in the heck type of mount is that. It's actually a Kessel mount that's been modified to accept the radion it was pretty cool it actually caught my eye i was like what what mount is that so yeah it's a gooseneck uh, mount and he's actually modified it to be able to mount the radion on it now one of the things that's really important to me you know i'm pretty into equipment but not too much a lot of or one thing that really catches my attention when i'm looking at somebody's reef tank is their maintenance now there's always one thing that, or not one thing, there's many things that successful reefers and their tanks have in common, and I think you're going to run across them here. So when I ask him what his maintenance is, this is what he told me. He said, I love to keep things simple. I'm always forgetting or being lazy. I got into the hobby about six years ago because of clowns, which will always be my centerpiece of my tanks. After that, I went over to corals, and that's where my ACAN addiction began. After seeing your video about placing ACANs together with Zoas, I was hooked. So for his maintenance, the things he does daily, he feeds the clowns, he's soft pellets uh, from Fauna Marin. Now the weekly maintenance is 15 to 20% weekly water changes. He feeds Min S and LPS pellets. Now the LPS pellets, he got introduced to those about five years ago. Um, and it's from Fauna Marin, and he said he's never looked back. Um, I mean, his ACANs, you can see, they're just so fluffy, so big, so happy. And he's really been telling me that it's all due to this Fauna Marin uh, that he is using. So as far as dosing, this one was pretty, uh, it was pretty interesting. He doesn't dose anything um, at the moment, but we'll begin the balling method in the upcoming weeks uh, when he works. Uh, when he begins to work a lot. So it's very cool and I can kind of see how he's getting away without doing any dosing and it all breaks down to his weekly 15 to 20 percent water changes. This is one of the reasons you can see his tank is so clear, so clean. His corals are just so happy because the parameters that are being you know, available to them, calcium, magnesium, alkalinity, trace elements, I mean they're all available in the water. Now of course I've Personally, I've never looked into balling method, so it'd be very cool to see how the balling method will go from obviously weekly water changes. But again, I think one thing that he, you know Kim has in common with a lot of other successful tanks out there is keeping it simple. I think in the first sentence he told me, he was like, dude, I want to keep it simple. Because just like I've shared with you guys before, if you keep it simple, it's something that you're probably going to do more often and you're actually going to look forward to doing so you can see how keeping it very easy just you know basic feeding nothing too crazy get your water changes in there 
you yourself can replicate a beautiful and stunning reef tank as Kim has here right in front of us. So I guess what is a good takeaway from this video? Well, <laughs> one of the biggest takeaways for me and like I always love to share with you guys is keep it simple guys. Keep it something that's very easy to do. You know, the last thing you want to do is overwhelm yourself. Keep it fun. Get, you know, whether you're into fish, whether you're into corals or specific species of corals, just keep it fun, keep it enjoyable. And I think everyone can learn a lot from Kim's Reef. And I think every one of us that's maybe struggling, you know, dial it back, take it easy and enjoy the ride. Cause sooner or later, if you're consistent with your water changes or your dosing or whatever you're doing to get back on track, as long as you keep fighting for it, sooner or later, the tank will come around. So guys, I want to give a big, big, big special thanks to Kim Hansen, also known as Kimmy's Reef on Instagram. I am going to have a link in the description of his page. He also has a YouTube channel. I'll have that a link down below if you guys do want to check that out. Again, I want to thank him very much for allowing me to feature his tank here on my YouTube channel. More importantly, share this beautiful eye candy which, with each and every one of you guys viewing it. So guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.